Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Friday, the 12th of July. All right, now it's early doors here. We're just coming uh, into the start of the uh, Asian session here. Uh, and I just thought I'd get this done earlier because it's, it's, it's a bit disappointing the, uh, what data we had yesterday. Now, we had, to me, it was a pretty clear, uh, serious opportunity to get some dollars in. Um, and what I mean, some good trades around the US CPI numbers now. Unfortunately for us, you know what? We had the, the, the um, power come out, sort of basically affirming the rate cut view from the Fed, but then the data has actually gone again, opposite to what they're actually saying. So it, we just can't take a break. And what I mean by that is we can't get the data to line up with what the Fed is saying and vice versa. So if you have a look at the CPI numbers, uh, the core numbers, just slightly better than expected. What we're looking for is weaker numbers, gives us clear dollar weakness. And the, uh, you know, the main CPI numbers there as well, just a little bit stronger than expected. And that takes the pressure off the Fed. You know, I think Powell will be thinking, well, what do I, what do I got to do to make people happy here? Okay, Trump's been calling out for some time. If you don't start cutting rates, et cetera, we'll sack you and all these sorts of things. He's come out with a um, <clears throat> sort of, you know, a, a sort of dovish sort of plan to like keep the US economy going. Now the other Fed, uh, and this is not uncommon, the other Fed uh, members are actually <clears throat> calling him out saying, well, basically, no, no, everything's going pretty good. Don't forget we've had the two main things they're looking at, are employment and CPI. CPI is ticking away a little bit stronger than expected. And the employment numbers, we saw that really good number uh, was it last Friday. So what do we do here? So when you come back to piece this all together, and you're looking for um, some answers on, well, how do we approach the market? Well, you know what? You've really got to be, this is where you've got to be patient and wait for the opportunities, right? So with the uh, overall, my overall assessment of the analysis, okay, we've still got this sort of dovish fed, but it's only hanging on by a thread, right? So, you know, the, the, all the, center, the central bank sentiment, the combined central bank sentiment from all the central banks, what we are ending up with is a really neutral, I could see the US dollar doing this next week, is where the sentiment from all the central banks mashed together is basically sideways. They're all standoffish, dovish, waiting to see what happens, et cetera, et cetera. Now this stems a lot from the US China trade issues, which had a flow on effect in a, in a lot of different areas. But if you're looking at the overall perspective of the um, charts, especially the hourly, the daily charts, right? These things, the, the currencies are just back trading sideways. So if you think you're actually going to start trading and start cleaning up right now, I think you're dreaming, right? If you're scalping the market, doing something like that, well, then good luck because there's no clear direction. And if I just give you a look at the, um, the charts here, I've left the trend lines where they were a day or so ago. You can see where the initial moves were on the, the back of the, the Fed, okay, um, being a little bit uh, dovish. And now what you, you, you overlay that with some, uh, some really good numbers, CPI numbers. Like they weren't massively strong, but they were better. So what you get is the currency is all diffused. Uh, Kiwi's still sort of sitting up there, but the rest of them are just starting to trade sideways. And this is what you would expect on an uncertain central bank issue. Now, obviously look at the price action here on dollar CAD. Uh, oil back above 60 bucks. You've got to think this thing's going down on the back of oil alone. This is a pretty, pretty good move. Um, but the price action here at Dollar Cat is nowhere near like gorgeous, right? And uh, Dollar Yen basically broke down after the, um, the dovish minutes. And now we're back in the range there as well. So really, to me, the major currency pairs have really been diffused and there's nothing we can do about this. So what we've got a situation is we've got, um, at the moment, it's pretty much clear, uh, <laughs> uncertain US dollar direction. Right? That's, the, that's the, the sort of the market conditions we've got. The US dollar is now, to me, completely diffused. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's sort of like, well, what are we doing here? Well, we're going to look at <clears throat> the core market drivers. Obviously, Brexit for sterling, China, US. Well, these things are ongoing, as we know. But what you can do is there's a few peripheral numbers. Now, if you're looking at, at the upcoming events, the ones we have listed, okay, there's nothing super serious that you need to be focusing on. But don't forget, we do have US PPI numbers coming out today. So they are, you know, it's another good inflation number that uh, 
we can sort of really have a good look at what's happening in the US market. But I think we've got all the data we need this week and the dollar is just trading sideways. Now, if you come into the um, European session, where, well, the trade balance out of China can always be a bit of a left field event that could potentially impact Aussie and Kiwi. It gives you a bit of an overall look because their economy is so uh, export driven. If there's a big change of exports to imports there, that can come into play. So make sure you do have a look, look at that. Uh, it's very late in the Asian session. Probably the Europeans will get a piece of that. The industrial production numbers out of the Eurozone, well, you know what, it can impact. What you're looking for is, is decent variance in these numbers. And to me, you know, ECB is dovish as you like. Uh, we're really looking for something on the back of that. And here's the uh, final PPI numbers. It's probably the last bit of detail out of uh, the US this week. It's not a hell of a lot to focus on. So if you're looking through basically the data this week, uh, I mean, today, um, you're really sort of clutching at straws where the, where the move's going to come from, okay? Is it geopolitical? Is it fundamental? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't even really know. It's, we're actually starting to lose so much focus here with the, um, and that's because, you know, and you can't push the market around. So if the analysis is telling you nothing's going on, right? Well, nothing's going on. You're guessing, right? A lot of these major currency pairs, if I just switch back over the charts, most of these uh, US currency pairs are right in the middle of ranges now. Where are they going from here? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't sure as hell know because we, we lack the general direction. All the central banks uh, are generally dovish, which diffuses everything. And uh, obviously Brexit with sterling. Uh, dollar CAD, I mean, I still like dollar CAD. Long term, it's still going down. And the fact that oil is back at 60 bucks, it's got to be a good chance for this thing to sort of probe to the downside. But unfortunately, we don't have a fundamental driver to really kick that in. And that's a bit of a bummer. All right, so, and even with some of your charts, you're already coming into, um, let me just get rid of those question marks. You're already coming in and starting to adjust your trend lines like this one here. Now it's come down and back up. You're looking at this sort of perspective and, and dolly yen back in the range. So there's not um, too much to get excited about just at the moment, guys. Wait for the opportunity. Stranger things have happened, like trades can come out of left field. But with no major data today, I don't see any fundamental driver to give anyone specific direction to get into the currencies. All right. All right, guys, that's it from me. Have a good uh, trade day and have a good weekend. Cheerio.